Hello Pisces, I'm Colleen Pearl, the Cool Crone, and welcome back to my channel. I want to take a moment to say thank you for everyone for leaving comments, and to all my new subscribers, welcome! I'm so glad that you could join us. In today's video, I will be discussing the major astrological events for 2021 as it relates to Pisces. Now you should watch the video for both your rising and sun signs as you will find both of them very informative. 2021 has a lot of astrological things going on, so let's get to it. Hello Pisces, welcome to your 2021 predictions. Um, let's get going. So we start the year, January 1st, with a stellium in Capricorn and a stellium in Aquarius. So this is going to fall in your 11th and 12th houses. So you are probably used to the energy of Pluto in your 11th house. That's the house that rules friends, groups, dreams, hopes, wishes, goals, um, sometimes called the house for retirement, because when people retire, the activities that they participate in all fall into the 11th house. They're going to travel all over the place. Um, travel is really the ninth house, but your retirement travel is the 11th house. Um, you're going to do all the hobbies that you ever thought of. And so you usually join groups having to do with those hobbies. So it's, it's groups and, and hopes and dreams and wishes. And, um, if you've made money from your original career, you're probably either, um, donating to charities, volunteering for charities, or maybe you're even starting charities. So the 11th house is a very interesting house to have Pluto in, which you have done for the last 12 years. So Pluto doesn't exactly spell fun to me, but if you've been um, in any of the groups that, that have to do with your interests, then that Pluto power has probably put you in charge. So you've probably been running a couple of groups or two or three because you have so much power with that Pluto in that house. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the fact that on New Year's Day and for the first few, uh, I guess a week or so in January, you're going to have the sun and Mercury really shining a light on that 11th house. So you are going to be having fun. I mean, you've probably done with holiday parties, but you'll be doing the planning and seeing everybody on the, on the committees and everything. So it will be really fun for you in January to be involved with those groups. And even if you're not retired, you probably are involved with groups of some kind and you probably hold a position in that group of responsibility. The next stellium is the uh, little Aquarius stellium and it's technically not a stellium. It's Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius, but we also have the uh, dwarf planet Pallas Athena, the asteroid, which I count as a planet. So three planets, that's a stellium. Uh, <laughs> now, Jupiter and Aquarius in your 12th house. So Pluto in the 12th house, I really understand. Jupiter and Saturn in the 12th house is a little bit harder to understand. Jupiter expands, Saturn contracts. So the 12th house has to do with uh, your subconscious, your dreams, but I also call it the house for things that we forget, things that we want to forget about, like people in long-term care, people in ashrams, people in monasteries, people who are locked away, people in mental institutions, people that you're not, people in jail, people that you're not going to visit and see every day, and you tend to forget about them. So if you've got Saturn there, then you may have some sort of a responsibility right now towards somebody in one of these types of institutions. And you also may feel very generous towards that person with Jupiter there in your 12th house. So you're always going back and forth between responsibility and love and duty um, concerning people in these kinds of situations. And it's no different this January. So on January 14th, we have a, a crescent moon in Aquarius, and that's going to highlight the situation with the 12th house. So that's where you're going to really be thinking about the people that you know who are not locked away, but who are in those institutions where they're not, they can't get out. They're isolated in some way. On the 14th, we also have the planet Uranus going direct. Now, Uranus has been retrograde a lot of 2020, most of 2020. And when a, sm when a large planet goes direct, it's a big deal. The energy really pushes and you really feel that shift in energy. 
So that shift is taking place in your third house. And <clears throat> that's the house for communications, for early childhood education, for um, neighbors and siblings, and anything having to do with communication, writing, speaking, singing, um, blogging. So you're going to have um, that, you're going to have Uranus, the energy of Uranus, which is unpredictable, really bursting forth in that third house on January 14th. And then on the 16th, Mars joins Uranus for an actual conjunction, giving it even more power, push, and energy. So what can you do with that energy? Well, you could start writing about all those people in the 12th house situations. That would be a good way to use that whole situation. You could start... Um, Putting, putting, uh, let me see here. You could start just putting pen to paper about whatever and let the Uranian inspiration take you. Uranus is inspiration. So Pisces, if anybody can get inspired by Uranus, it's you. So that's what I su would suggest that you do. Whatever topic suits you, just go ahead and write about it and see if you can bring about some positive change. Now, um, at the end of January, we have our first Mercury retrograde of the year, and Mercury is going to be all retrograde in air signs this year. And the first retrograde is in Aquarius, which is in your 12th house, which is where those other planets are. And at the time of the Mercury retrograde, you will have Sun, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mercury all in your 12th house. So you will be dreaming a lot. You will be thinking about your dreams. You probably will be remembering your dreams. You probably will be talking and writing about the people in these institutions that you are connected to. Or you will find out about more people who are in those institutions. And it will surprise you that there's so many people who are sort of locked away. Um, you probably thought just most of us from COVID were being locked away. And then when you really think about it, there's a lot of people who are pretty vulnerable, pretty helpless, that do get um, placed into, pl into institutions so that they can be cared for. And um, this is going to be something that really resonates with you. Now, on the 11th of February, we have a new moon in Aquarius. And again, that emphasizes that 12th house. So the whole first two, maybe up to March. Yeah, the whole first three months of the year are really focusing on this 12th house stuff. So that's subconscious, that's self-sabotage, that's your dreams, that's fantasy, that's um, illusion, that's um, hos long-term hospitals, hospice care, uh, mental institutions, ashrams, uh, monasteries, cloisters, uh, anything in religious orders where you're isolated from society. This is all 12th house stuff. So you're going to be concerned with all of this stuff for the whole first quarter of the year. Um, so I'd say look into it. I'd say think about the people who are connected to it. And if you have been um, avoiding them or ignoring them, I would say, you know, get there and see them or write to them or text them or Zoom with them, you know, connect with them in some way. Because for some reason in 2021, that's really important for you, Pisces. Now, on February 17th, we have the first of several squares between Saturn and Uranus. And Saturn is in your 12th house. And Uranus is in your third house. So um, there's a square there. Squares create agitation. They create situations where you become so agitated that you have to take action. Now, you can ignore it, and then you don't learn the lesson. The square is there to teach you a lesson. And in this case, in 2021, there will be three of these throughout the year. So you have plenty of time to get used to this, but I would not ignore it. I would, I would grasp it. I would embrace it. And I would try to wrap my head around what can I learn from this? Why am I being shown this? and and get through it and you'll you'll see why later i'll have something more to say about healing in a little while and then on um 
the 27th at the end of the month, we have a trine between Mars and Pluto. So Mars is also going to be in that third house. So you're going to have a lot of energy for all of that writing because Mars is energy, right? Even in Taurus, Mars is energetic. Um, and then it's going back to your 11th house where Pluto resides. So you're going to be writing maybe more about the groups that you're a part of or something that your friends are doing or something that you'd like to do. But the writing, I think, is going to be a big thing throughout the year, too. With Uranus there, again, one manifestation of Uranus is inspiration. And so use that inspiration. You're not It's not always going to be there. It's actually been there for a few years, so maybe you're already writing, but that Mars conjunction is going to give it just a boost. And, and also then the Mars trine Pluto is going to give it power. So you've got a lot pushing you in that direction, so definitely use it. All right, then we come to March, still focusing on that 12th house. But now we've got a little emphasis on your first house. So we've got You've, you've got Neptune in your first house if you're Pisces rising. And uh, Neptune is your planet. So that's very strong. So I would say that there's a very dreamy quality about you, that you live your life in kind of a big diaphanous kimono most of the time. And <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> that you um, are a person that really loves imagination, being creative, possibly spirituality. Um, and many people may just think that you're a little off the wall just because you're so dreamy. You're so in the ocean, you know, things about water, um, are just really, really your vibe. Um, but people with Pisces rising are usually very, very beautiful people too. So they'll have very, very beautiful watery looking eyes and, uh, you know, they tend to dream. They tend to be dreamers and they tend to create and use their minds to build beautiful fantasies or very, very spiritual stories or stories about suffering and loss. They're, they have tremendous imagination and they usually are really great, great um, um, artists of some kind or writers. Now you've got this big push of writing from your third house because Uranus has been there for so long. And as the planets touch, touch that as they go through uh, the house where Uranus resides, that gives you an, a little impetus, a little push, another couple of chapters. Now, Uranus is, Tor is in Taurus, and Taurus is your third house. So when you write, it's a very concrete thing. So just know that when you put pen to paper, you are creating a property. You are creating something solid. So if you've ever had any problems with money, Pisces, write those thoughts down, and I bet you start making money. Now... So Sun conjunct Neptune. Anytime we have the Sun in our first house, it's really a boon, really a boost. It gives us a lot of energy. It helps us feel good about ourselves. It helps us feel confident and like we're about to succeed. And your first house, anybody's first house, is your calling card. When you walk into a room and nobody knows you, they are meeting your first house. When you... Um, As, as people get to know you, they get to know either your sun or your moon. But on that first impression, what they get to know is your first house. And having Neptune there, and it's been there like Uranus, it's been in your first house for a long time. Um, if you are actually a Pisces, this has been a really strong thing. And it has just emphasized exponentially all of your Piscean qualities. So very, 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 very Pisces. You could be a dancer. Pisces rules the feet. You could do something with the feet. Maybe you're a podiatrist. Maybe you're a person who walks a lot or, or now I find most Pisces are not big athletes, but they can be, they can be runners. They can be something that involves the feet. So why not? On the 13th of March, Venus joins Neptune in Pisces in your first house. So again, you're feeling very confident, but very beautiful. Or you may decide this is the time to beautify yourself. This may be the time that you decide that you need to um, make some changes, maybe maybe even something like surgery or, or, a, or a, um, a procedure done or just buying new cosmetics or new clothes or having your hair done. Venus things will take place in March for you. 
Um, and then at the end of March, Venus moves out of Pisces into Aries in your second house and conjuncts Chiron. So Chiron is the wounded healer, and this gives you a great opportunity for more healing. So if there's anything that you're feeling needs to be rectified or healed, um, this Venus conjunct Chiron in your second house is a great time to do it. Now, what if what needs healing is your monetary situation, your, eco your own personal economy? That's the time to do it. So if you've been having problems with money or, or your money has just been up and down and very erratic, then having Venus come along to your second house in general is just a big boon and really helps money start to flow to you. But having it conjunct with Chiron may allow you to find out why you've had problems with money in the first place and allow you to heal that particular issue. May 14th, Jupiter goes into the sign of Pisces. And this is really nice. You're going to have Jupiter in your first house. Now, a lot of times when Jupiter goes into the first house, people gain weight. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, but having Jupiter there is also a real blessing. And literally in the sign of Pisces, Jupiter just bestows blessings. It will give you blessing after blessing after blessing. So Pisces, enjoy this. Revel in it. Just get down on your knees and, and rub around in it. It's just going to feel really, really good to have Jupiter there. Um, you've already got Neptune there, so you will feel very spiritual, very loved, very cared for. And that no, but you, you don't want to miss that. That's just going to feel really, really good. Then on May 26th, towards the end of the month, we have our first eclipse of the season in your 10th house, uh, Pisces. It, the eclipse is going to be in Sagittarius at 5 degrees 26 minutes, and that is your 10th house, your career. So there could be some changes coming to your career, and this eclipse may be pointing that out. And it is going to be opposite your 4th house, where we have Venus, Mercury, and on, uh, yeah, just Venus and Mercury. So Venus and Mercury may be looking at your domestic situation, the fourth house is your house, the real estate of the house, the real, like the land that the house is on, and also the people that you live with and your attitude about the house, how you feel about security, how you feel about family. So this eclipse is in, in opposition to that. So it's putting a spotlight on that um, as well. And then on um, May 29th, Mercury goes retrograde again. Um, and this time it's in the sign of Gemini, and that's going to focus also on your fourth house. So having Mercury retrograde in your fourth house may make you rethink decisions that you made about either decorating the house or buying a new house or selling a house or things about your own security. It's just making you question those things and look at those things, which examining things, analyzing things, that's a great thing to do during Mercury retrograde. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't pull back from that. I would go with that. And then we get into June. Now in June, we have a solar eclipse at 19 degrees, Gemini, 47 minutes. And this is, again, going to focus on your fourth house. So um, definitely there is an emphasis on your fourth house right now. At that time, at the time of this solar eclipse, you will have Sun, Moon, and Mercury all sitting there. So there will be a feeling of family for you but also a feeling of examining the family and your again feelings of security what you're leaving the family so very very likely that you will be looking at possibly changing your home selling it buying a new one or doing construction on it adding on uh breaking down walls redecorating something of that nature and it, and it might just be a big job that you're doing that you've been like you needed a new roof. You know, it could be just that, too. But this would also be a good time to do those sorts of larger projects for your home. Then on uh, June 14th, there is a square between Saturn and Uranus. So as I said before about the square between Saturn and Uranus, this is just an agitating event that forces you into action. So go back in the video and listen to the other uh, description about what's happening with Saturn and Uranus because they're in the almost exact same spot. 
in the same houses in your chart. So it's going to be the same information. Um, then on the 21st, Jupiter goes retrograde and begins its trek back into Aquarius, where it came from. It's been in Pisces for a month or so, and now it's going to go back into Aquarius, where it's going to help you to re-examine those um, dreams and those forgotten people and whatever actions you're taking concerning your 12th house activities. Um, and it could just be that you're learning to meditate. You know, it could, that's your subconscious. So it could just be that simple. It doesn't have to be anything really big, although with Jupiter, things are big. Then on the 22nd, Mercury will finally go direct, and that also affects your fourth house. So if there are any projects that you were wanting to get started on your fourth house, on your house that is ruled by the fourth house, then after the 22nd would be the time to do it. So if you have to contract with anybody, hire workers, whatever, don't sign anything while Mercury is retrograde. We should know this by now. Please, please, please don't do that. All right, moving on to July. July 1st. We have Mars in Leo in opposition to Saturn in Aquarius. Now, Aquarius is your 12th house, and Mars is going to be in Leo in your 6th house. So this could affect your work. So there could be some things going on in the 12th house that would be, you know, all the 12th house stuff, the sabotage, the subconscious, the dreams, the... the um, um, illusions, things like that, delusions, um, that Saturn is really trying to nail them down. Saturn there is trying to make sense out of it and to, to put a structure around it, which you really can't do with the subconscious, very hard. But then it's opposing Mars and Leo in your house for work. So you're wanting to take risks possibly at work or with your health care or with people at your work. Um, or maybe just showing off, maybe just competing with them, maybe just trying to be better or than you were before, or literally just trying to uh, show somebody up. And the Saturn in the 12th house is going to probably squelch that. That opposition energy is probably not something you want to fight with. You know, you do you. So, <laughs> so now, as a general rule, this Mars opposition Saturn um for the country I'm not super worried about but I do feel like it's going to it's going to be indicative of something making the news that has to do with um not riots but protests protest demonstration kind of things I think we're going to see that on July 1st then the rest of July is kind of a snooze. August is kind of a snooze. Most of September is a snooze. The end of September, we do have Mercury doing another Mercury retrograde, this time in Libra. And Libra, where are we here? Libra is going to be your um, eighth house. So Libra is going to be talking of Mercury and Libra is going to be talking about your shared finances. The nice thing about Mercury is it's always close to the sun. And this year, Mars is very close to the sun. So um, Mercury in Libra and is, is going to be joined by Mars and the sun that are look like they're pretty much conjunct right now. Yes, they are. Um, and that's going to put a spotlight on that area of life. And then you've got Mercury retrograde saying, yes, we're putting a spotlight on it, but you're not going to understand it or you're going to mess it up in some way. So it's a little frustrating, but in a way it's kind of funny because it really forces you to examine, to analyze, to study that area of your chart, that area of life that is being affected by the planets going through those houses. So, You've got the sun and Mars there in the um, eighth house, and that's talking about your shared resources. So there could be some sort of a power struggle going on about your shared resources, or there could be that there's just new shared resources that you have to really look at. Having the sun there may indicate that there's something new. Having Mercury there means there's something that you need to study and look at. And having Mars there means there's activity, there's energy going towards it. So I would say that there's something new going on as far as shared resources go. So that's good. That's very exciting and that's very nice and stable for, you, for your family. Um, Mercury is going to stay uh, retrograde until... Um, a little past mid-October, until October 18th. On October 17th, though, 
Jupiter goes direct, and then on the 18th, Mercury goes direct. So that's another thing. Now, Mercury is going to be, um, where's Jupiter? Mercury is going to be in Libra, right? Jupiter is going to be in Aquarius, which is a sister sign to Libra, which means that it's going to, they're going to be trying. So you're going to have this nice big boon, this lucky boon towards your shared resources um, on October 17th and 18th. Jupiter happens to be in your 12th house. So if you can just manage to dream up what it is that you want in your shared resources, you can manifest it on the 18th. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So <laughs> you need to... Um, you need to visualize. You need to visualize what it is that you really want to have happen. And I'm serious about that. You can ha may, you can absolutely manifest that, Pisces. You, you're probably really good at manifesting anyway. And But Jupiter is just going to give you this supreme boost to be able to do it in October. So if you're looking for that dream, uh, let's see, what would this be for shared resources? If you're looking for that, you know, dream house and you need a dream loan to make it happen, Manifest that stuff, you know, manifest it, make it happen. All right. So then we have uh, in November, on November 15th, we have um, kind of a serious aspect between Mars and Uranus. Mars is in Scorpio and it's opposing Uranus. And this will be taking place in your third to ninth houses, right? Yeah third to ninth houses. So this is kind of rough. Mars in Scorpio can be militaristic. It can be violent and opposing, just outright opposing Uranus means that the tensions and energies are going to just built up and explode. So Mars can aid explosions. Um, Uranus is completely unpredictable. So we're talking weather events, we're talking natural disasters, we're talking um, military events, we're talking something that is explosive happening around November 15th that will affect thousands of people. Now for you personally, um, you know, Mars, Mercury, and Sun are just traveling like a little trio, um, and they're going to be in your ninth house. So I would say probably not a good time to be overseas for you, um, but a good time to be looking at things about other cultures and other countries and looking at um, whatever is in the ninth house area of interest, such as the law or the publishing industry, publishing a book, or um, writing a book, um, having to do with uh, maybe uh, something overseas, something foreign, maybe a different culture, maybe a different philosophy, maybe a different language. So entertaining those kinds of things at this time are really, really good. Now you still may have a big blow up on November 17th, but I'd rather you have a blow up over email than be involved in an actual like blow up. That's scary that's nobody wants that so um so i'm just warning you about that then on the 19th of november we have a lunar eclipse at 27 degrees of taurus it's the only earth sign eclipse all year um and it heralds the change that will happen further down the road to doing the eclipses in the in the fixed signs on december 4th we have a solar eclipse in sagittarius and that will be in your 10th house at 12 degrees, 22 minutes, Sagittarius. And that will begin a change for your career. That will definitely be indicating some kind of a change that's coming for your career. It may not come right at that red hot moment because there's no other planetary influences there. And it has to, and it makes a difference what's going on with your own personal natal chart. Um, so I'm just going to say that it's in the area of career. So there will be some kind of changes in your career, whether it affects you to actually change your career or change your, what you're doing in your career, change jobs or whatever that I can't say without looking at your personal chart. And the last chart that we're going to look at for the year is December 24th, Christmas Eve, 2021, when the last time of the year we have Saturn square Uranus. 
same signs, same houses. So just go back in the video and look at where we talked about Saturn square Uranus because it's all the same stuff. It's the same areas. Now, there could be events that evolve and each time these squares happen, they further it along in a different, you know, in a little bit different way because it's Uranus. So it's going to, you know, take it off in a different way. But the actual energies that are going on, it's exactly the same. On the next to the last day of the year, on December 30th, finally we have Jupiter going back into Pisces. It's been moving direct for about two and a half months, and now it finally gets into Pisces. So it's coming back into your first house. It's coming out of your 11th house, and it's making you feel at peace, at ease, because Jupiter in Pisces just does that. It's at peace and at ease. It may cause you to gain weight, but chances are Pisces, you're just a skinny little thing, and you could gain some weight anyway now um that's how the year ends up which is it's a it's a big year there is a lot going on in 2021 but um you can see as i went through the year for you where there's real themes and emphasis on particular houses like it's not everything it doesn't bounce around a lot it re it's very focused which i think for most people, because 2020 was just such an all over the place year, I think it's kind of nice to have things just kind of focused in these particular areas. Anyway, that's your prediction for 2021. I'm so glad that you stayed to the end. Please leave me a comment and let me know if you enjoyed the video. And through the year, reference back to the video and let me know how things went. Did things really happen the way I said they were going to happen for you? Now, if you're interested in getting a personal reading, my uh, contact information will be right down here. You can visit me at my website um, and click on services to see what, I, what else I offer besides astrology. Um, you can also contact me directly by sending me an email. I would love to hear from you and I would love to read your comments. I hope you've subscribed and clicked the notification bell so you don't miss any of the new future videos that are coming because there's lots of really exciting ones coming in 2021. And be sure to give us a like. That really helps the channel. Good luck to you, Pisces. I hope you have a wonderful 2021 and now you are well prepared to face all of the challenges. And I will see you next time.